because my background is not necessarily in interior design, it gives me a different perspective on what we're doing. People really like my fresh new approach to antiques and vintage. I think that I honor and pay homage to the past, but I breathe life into new spaces in a different kind of way. I'm really attracted to 1960s French Space Age, 1980s Memphis Milano, 1970s Italian and French design. I also love 18th century French Rococo. So it's really a very eclectic kind of maximalist style. I like people to enter into my interiors and feel like they're in another world and feel like they're experiencing something that they've never experienced before but I also like them to feel connected to where we are in the world. Hi, I'm Sasha Bykoff. I'm based in New York City and I am the president of Sasha Bykoff Interior Design. We are in my home in East Hampton, which is in the eastern end of Long Island. I built this home from the ground up. It took me three years to get a permit and a little over a year to build. It's my proudest work I've ever done. There's something so special about being able to pick every single material, every single detail, design everything from scratch. My overall design aesthetic, it's Marie Antoinette at Studio 54. This home is kind of the opposite of that, more biophilic design, it's Japanese inspired, it's modern barn, it's coastal, and it lends more on the simplistic modernist side. I always say this home is simple, but it's not boring. There's still elements of me, and there's still moments of surprise. Come on in. I was able to build a little vestibule entryway, which is a really nice moment before you enter kind of this open floor plan. So here we kept it really simple. We have the wood paneling throughout. And another great aspect of an entryway is storage is so important. I have hidden doors and cabinets and drawers here. And it's a place where you can put your coat and your jacket and other odds and ends that you would need. One of the highlight moments of this open floor plan space is the kitchen. We have the vent, which just comes right up. This is a very seamless kind of modern design that doesn't detract from our high ceilings and the architecture of the house. I chose this stone, which was the beginnings of my kitchen. This was the first thing that I decided to choose was this Esmeralda onyx because it really resembles the sea and the colors outside. This dining room is really inspired by my life out here where I do all my little flower arrangements and where I entertain. It's directly across from the kitchen. I found this fabric at Pierre Frey and I immediately was drawn to it because it has all of my farm fresh veggies on it. Another aspect of the dining room that was kind of the last piece of the puzzle is this 1960s Danish Werner Panton moon pendant. From the kitchen and the dining area, we have the open floor plan living area. This is a Desede non-stop couch. It's an iconic collectible design. It is meant to kind of curve and move around. So I've always wanted this couch. With an open floor plan, if you're trying to create some kind of divide in the room, you really want to look into furniture that's going to look good from all different angles. The coffee table is one of my favorite pieces. It's also a collectible design piece that's really coveted. It's Roger Caprone. It's French. It's from the 1960s. And it has um, these fossilized tiles on top of different leaves 
and branches, two vintage chairs that were actually my grandfather's in his office, still a fun print that's whimsical that connects to farm life and everything going on out here. And then the fireplace, I really wanted a massive fireplace. And then we have a very organic light fixture pendant by Noguchi. This is the guest bedroom and it's done in my uptown toile wallpaper with Verven. And it's also in fabric on the headboard and the little cute lamp shades. And the inspiration here was to create a classic French toile, but you know, update it a bit. A little bit of Brigitte Bardot and Saint-Tropez on her boat. We have Audrey Hepburn. These are actually the shark teeth that my builder gifted me when we were working on the house. It kind of fit right within the palm perfectly and that's where I got the idea for my hardware collection with S.A. Baxter. This bathroom is actually done in my tile collection. Uh, with New Ravenna based off of a bandana design. So the tile actually comes in two different styles and in an array of colors and I chose the indigo colorway. When I was designing this tile collection I definitely had my house in mind. I wanted to pay homage to classic Americana motifs and immediately the bandana motif came to mind. This is my den, library, TV room, and this is a very special room to me because I finally got a place where I could house my extensive book collection and all of my objets and curiosities. Here, I fully designed a room customized with millwork and shelving to house all of my little trinkets. Custom made this sofa with a maharam fabric that both has that neon orange and that also has that sandy color. So it felt like it was like the perfect, perfect homage to that inspiration. Now we are entering my third guest room, which we call the Versace room. This room houses my second collection I did with Versace um, for Art Basel where I designed the surfboard bed inspired by Gianni Versace's life in Miami. The Murano seashell sconces, which brings you back to the sea life and nature. And we covered this entire room in a kind of shimmery tan grass cloth from Fabricut. We put it on the ceilings as well. I finished it off with a sailfish that I caught with my grandfather. Beautiful fabric that I bought on the beach in Punta del Este, they were beach blankets actually. That's another design rule you don't have to stick by, that two chairs have to be exactly the same pair, but you know, we don't play by those rules over here. We were able to put an underground window here that shoots up light from the top. People forget about their basements or they don't use them properly, it's usable space here, but if you're building a house and you're able to integrate the lower level with natural light, you can really get a lot of use out of the space. This is my tile collection with New Ravenna. It's uh, based off of a 16th century Dutch map called Atlas Mayor, and it was my dream to have a bathtub in my bedroom. And so this was kind of like the perfect art-filled way to doing it. Um, and it also is great because it does lend a little bit of color into this room. My favorite highlight of the room, wait for it, because I had my bathtub here, there was nowhere really to put a TV and that's where technology comes into place. The TV comes from underneath the bed, fully integrated and built into the design of the bed. It pops out like you could have your own home theater and it really solves the issue of the eyesore of the TV on the wall, which is hard for many designers. Voila. This is my outdoor dining area. It is a patio and a breezeway that connects the guest house garage with the main house. 
And this was really important for kind of that compound living lifestyle that I love. The garage is really an extension of the home. I wanted it to be designed just as nicely. A lot of people think that the garage is meant for storage and meant for mess, but for me, because I wanted to create this compound living, I wanted it to feel part of the home. Not only does it house my baby, my 1975 Mercedes, but it's also inspired by this car. And I designed a curved kitchenette that wraps around the staircase, so it's a real architectural moment. This is the guest bedroom above the garage. And I would say the best feature of this space is the round window. It has the best view in the house because we are on the top level right now. Probably one of my favorite features in the house is the outdoor bathtub, which is fully custom at a Verde marble. It's an entire piece of rock that was sculpted into this bathtub. And here at the pool, I created a long day bed. I wanted the colors of the landscape and of nature to be the focal point, and I wanted the furnishings to kind of just blend in. So that's why I chose to go really simple out here. I wanted you to kind of feel like you were in a hotel or a members club where everyone can kind of jump onto the day bed and play backgammon or Monopoly or card games. And I normally have big trays of fruits and food. When deciding to build a garden into your home, you first want to think about what you want to grow because that will kind of determine the size and the shape of your garden. So I wanted my garden to be really modern like the exterior of my house so I decided to do something really linear and rectangular. I created a list of everything I wanted to grow and determined that this was the right size for the garden. This is the best part of the house and it's being on the water and you know being able to wake up to this and see this every day. The final product of the home is really perfect. This is a place where I kind of seek inspiration. I have a repose. I live by the sea and for me it's nature that really drives me and that really inspires me. It's the sounds, it's the smells, it's the colors, but I always say design is never done. <laughs>